les téléservices PACOM. This is the PACOM SEM-1000 Security Monitor. It's about 10 or 11 inches in size. We'll know once we open it up for sure. A curved CRT, shadow mask technology. PACOM started around in 1983 in Australia of all places, eventually going global. Seems to have a strong presence from France as some of their YouTube videos are spoken in French. Let's check out the controls on the front. Of course, the flap is missing off the front. The controls revealed are tint starting at the very left hand side. Tint only applies to NTSC signals. Next is color, brightness, contrast, sharpness and volume. Followed by a push in, push out VTR button, video tape recorder button. Lastly, a PAL and NTSC push button. Indicating that the monitor is compatible with NTSC and PAL signals. We'll see what's available on the back, what we can plug in very shortly. There is also a power button just out of sight. Basic metal back plate. Getting in nice and close now. Paycom model SEM-1000 and closed circuit TV color monitor. AC 120 volts or 230 volts via that slider right there. Made in Korea. You do wonder, is this thing being made in South or North Korea? Because the metal finish on the back here gives it that communist cheap basic build feel but that's how it is often with security monitors anyway iec socket for the power cable main switch there 12 volt socket can be ran on 12 volts as well makes it portable 12 to 24 actually next to that's the input an s video and a composite via the bnc connector there audio mono in red color there it's usually white but in the older times they like the NES has that red audio output RCA whereas mono is usually white anyway back to the connectors here we've got a set an output set that reflects the input set but it's in an output and then another set of what appears to be inputs and outputs there as well labeled VTR so you might be able to run two things into this monitor at least we've got S-Video, that's our top signal that we can put in to the monitor. Let's open it up and have a look on the inside. It's hardly surprising to find a Samsung branded tube inside. The size is 27 centimeters, indicated there on the sticker, 27, which equates to about 11 inches. The Americans would probably class it as a 10 inch monitor. I've removed the neck board so that we can see in here a bit better. What interests me is this PCB here on the back that has connections, or it has here a largely unpopulated area. You can see there's markings for red, green and blue, and I think sync and so forth. Perhaps there's another model in this range that takes RGB. Perhaps it was designed like this in case they made a future revision that could accept RGB inputs. Pity that it's not populated. If we look around, move that neck board back out of the way, we can see there on the plastics just, if it, the camera will pick it up, there's round drilled out sections that would accommodate the connectors for those other signals. Although this doesn't translate to holes here on the front, but that's where those extra inputs would be if they were installed. There's three trimmers on the board near the front, beneath the tube. V, uh, v size, horizontal center, sub tint. There's also a sub brightness, but that's not populated with the trimmer. There's also another stand up trimmer by the look of it there, which is vertical center. These trimmers are very hard to access. You'd have to undo the chassis further to slide the PCB out. Not super worker friendly, but at least those adjustments there are available. Last thing I make mention of while we're inside the monitor is this power supply board here is fairly close to the casing. The casing's all metal. Obviously the casing's off right now. 
However, there's no protection, there's no screening, there's no plastic cover of any sort guarding, protecting these solder joints from touching the side case that goes on. Sure, they can't reach, but as a good safety precaution, I would expect some sort of cover to be on there to protect a short, for sure. If this was a Sony design monitor, 100% there'd be something guarding that PCB from touching the metal shielding on the outside. Perhaps someone's removed it and hasn't put it back on, but as it is, not particularly safe. Hmm, what do I think of the picture on this thing? Well, I'd like to compare it to another monitor of similar size in S video to get a good idea, but I don't really think this monitor outputs anything special in the way of its picture. Come to think of it, I can't really see much of an advantage of this unit over a regular television of a similar size. The nice flat flush sides are handy if you want to rotate it and play it vertically. That might be an advantage you have over a 10 inch television. But all in all, no RGB, no component, does have S video, maybe that's a help to you. I'm not really familiar with how good a range of connections smaller televisions have, whether they have S-Video or not. But all in all, nothing particularly special about the Paycom, so don't stress, just go for a regular television instead. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe, see you in the next one.